Hi, my name is Brad Jersak. Welcome to episode three of our series on listening prayer. Glad you could be back with us. Today I want to share with you why I think you can hear God very well, and I want to do a little survey with you to demonstrate it. It's based on John 10 where Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. He doesn't say my sheep should hear my voice. He doesn't say my sheep could hear my voice if only they were really spiritual, they fasted and prayed, they were super moral, or anything like that. His sheep hear his voice based on the new covenant. His sheep hear his voice based on his own goodness, his ability to be a good shepherd. When I think good, I think he's good at it. He's a competent shepherd, and he is able to get messages to you. So let's do our survey together. Number one, have you ever felt drawn to the love of God? Have you heard his invitation to enter his family and said yes to becoming part of his family of faith? I call that the invitation station. Jesus said in the Gospel of John, Nobody comes to me unless the Father himself invites them. That means that if you've felt that desire, that draw, that call into his family, you didn't do it because you were just hearing the voice of an evangelist or a friend, a counselor, or a parent. You did it because your heart was hearing the Father's call to you. The wonderful thing is he can keep issuing invitations to you. He may invite you to a particular church, or to be baptized, or to go on some missions trip, or to serve in some way. He may invite you to the place you've been called to live, to work, to serve. He may call you into relationships and community. And these are all by way of invitation. A second survey question would be this. Has he ever spoken to you through his written word, the Bible? Lots of people tell me, I don't hear God's voice. A good response to that is, have you opened your Bible lately? God's word is faithful to speak through the scriptures. If you dust off your Bible, take it off the shelf, and pray this prayer, it might help. Lord, I don't want to read an old book today. I'm not interested in ancient Near Eastern literature. I want to hear your living voice speaking to me. And if God's really grumpy, he'll let you read for hours before he says something. But of course, he's not like that, is he? He wants to speak. He desires it. And he says, of course I would do that. Just start reading. When you look in your Bibles, some of you have highlighting there. I say, that's a testimony that God spoke to you. You're reading through the scriptures. The Holy Spirit highlights a verse. And you highlight it because it's a message to you. The third question of our survey is this. Have you ever felt like God has spoken to you through a preacher, a teacher, some kind of messenger, an evangelist, a prophet, a friend, a parent, a child? God is able to speak to us through one another as we open ourselves up with words of life that strengthen, comfort, and encourage. Let's ask another question. Have you ever heard God speak to you or felt him touch you? Have you sensed his presence through music, worship, or even top 40 songs? When I'm listening, I find it easier to hear the Lord's voice. When the kings of Israel wanted Elisha to prophesy on demand, the first request he made was this, get me a harpist. What he was doing was testifying that he could hear better in the context of worship. Another example of how you might hear God's voice regularly, frequently, do you ever get a burden to pray for someone else? Where do you think that comes from? I'm sure you're all very compassionate folks. But I'm telling you, at the root of that is the love of God for others who's calling you to pray. He's giving you that burden. And this too counts as the voice of God. Do any of you ever feel called beyond prayer to a prompting to go serve, to write a letter, to bring a message to somebody, perhaps a gift, an email, cookies, you name it. When you have those promptings or nudges from the Lord, that counts. That's his voice. Some of you have heard God's voice through what we call conviction of sin. Maybe it was just accusation. Can you tell the difference? When we talk about conviction of sin, we usually mean that our conscience is guiding us away from wrong into right, or that somehow through our conscience, God is calling us away from self-destruction or away from harming others. Fair enough. That sounds like love to me. On the other hand, some of us open our hearts up to accusation, condemnation, and the voice of self-hatred. I just want you to know that's not the voice of God. He doesn't speak that way. He doesn't want to pound on you or make you hate yourself. In fact, he quite loves you. 
So whatever we think of conviction of sin, it will be an invitation to freedom. I want you to notice something. As I've done this survey, most of you would have to say, yes, I've heard God's invitation. Yes, he's somehow spoken to me through his word, the scriptures, or through songs and hymns of my past. Most of you would have to say, yes, I've had a burden to pray for others, and I've been prompted to go to others to help, to serve, and I've experienced this idea of the conviction of sin. That's at least six ways that you're already hearing God. You hear him well, and you hear him often. Let's close with an exercise. I want you to imagine sitting face to face with God and asking him this. What are you inviting me to today? Take a step of faith. If it seems like something that would strengthen, comfort, or encourage other brothers and sisters, that's our first step on the road to discernment. We'll get to that next episode.